Hello, and welcome back to the Interpac Academy. I'm Teresa Hippis from the Interpac Commercial Marketing Team. Today we open our latest video series on selecting an industrial cylinder. This is the first video in a three-part series and will provide an operational overview of industrial cylinders. Interpac offers an extensive line of industrial hydraulic cylinders. These cylinders are used to provide force to many common industrial applications, such as lifting, pulling, pressing, and punching. Interpac cylinders find their way into many unique and different applications that our customers continuously develop every day. Before determining the correct cylinder for your application, it is best to gain an understanding of basic terms used when discussing cylinders. In this episode, we provide a basic description of terms like capacity, stroke, collapsed height, extended height, and actuation type as they pertain to cylinder discussions. The main function of a hydraulic cylinder is to supply a controlled force over a specific distance. The cylinder force and stroke are provided by its hydraulic plunger. As hydraulic fluid is applied to the cylinder, it is the plunger that extends and exerts the force when resistance is met. The force a cylinder can exert is typically referred to as its capacity. A 25 ton or 232 kilonewton cylinder exerts a force of 25 tons or 232 kilonewton at its rated hydraulic pressure. For this video, we will focus on cylinders that operate at 10,000 PSI or 700 bar. The distance that a cylinder plunger can travel is referred to as stroke. A cylinder with a 10 inch or 254 millimeter stroke can provide its rated force over 10 inches or 254 millimeters. When sizing a specific cylinder, one important factor is to select a cylinder that will fit into the application space. This usually requires the cylinder to not exceed a certain height. When the cylinder is fully retracted, its height is referred to as the collapsed height. As mentioned before, when the cylinder extends to its maximum stroke, this height is referred to as the extended height. In other words, the cylinder collapsed height plus the cylinder stroke equals the cylinder extended height. Remember, the collapsed height cannot be less than the cylinder stroke. There is one instance when this statement does not hold true. This is with telescoping cylinders. These cylinders are outside the scope of this video. The next consideration when selecting a cylinder is its method of retraction. The cylinders we are discussing are all hydraulically advanced. When hydraulic fluid is applied, the cylinder plunger advances or extends and can develop its full capacity over its full stroke range. The method for cylinder retraction or how the plunger comes back can vary depending on the cylinder type. The most common retraction type is a single acting industrial cylinder. These cylinders develop force in only one direction, the advance or extent. To retract the cylinder, the oil is directed out of the cylinder and a spring or gravity brings the plunger to its retracted position. Spring retraction is by far the most common method to retract a single acting industrial cylinder. Gravity return is typically used in cylinder designs that require a very low collapsed height. The main advantage of a single acting cylinder is not only their simplicity, but also the simplicity of the hydraulic system to operate them. This simplicity usually means the single acting cylinders offer a very high value through lower overall cost and very good performance. The second option for cylinder retraction is a double acting cylinder. In a double acting cylinder, the plunger not only extends, but also retracts hydraulically. This is accomplished through the addition of a second hydraulic port and hose to power the retract side of the plunger down. The main advantage of a double acting cylinder is that they provide a powered retract cycle, allowing work to be done in both directions. Also, they typically retract faster than a similarly sized single acting cylinder, especially in systems with long hose runs. The disadvantage of double acting cylinders 
is a slightly higher collapse height for a given capacity and stroke. This is due to the additional port and seals at the top of the cylinder. This, along with the additional hose and valving requirements, mean a slightly higher system cost versus a single acting system. I hope you found this basic cylinder information useful. If you are looking to specify an industrial cylinder into your application, this should help you get started. For further information, please visit us at interpac.com or reach out to your nearest Interpac representative for further assistance. In our next course in this series, we will discuss how to properly size a cylinder for your application. I'm Teresa Hippis, and for the Interpac Academy, thank you for watching.